once again, I find that you and I are quite amazingly very much on the same path of thinking that effectively, yeah. you know, so there's a long history of what pop music is, right? And there's an argument to be made that rock and roll and pop music weren't all that different when they started in the early 50s. And things certainly evolved in a popish way as the first two decades came along until psych rock and hard rock in the early 70s hit and, you know, then later punk and disco. But, you know, yeah. there was until about, I don't want to say, maybe 1985, there wasn't such a negative connotation in doing pop music. And there was a whole lot of very, very brilliant people just trying to make the best pop music song they could. And it was just like you said, they didn't like Prince didn't sit down and go, well, I'm going to do a metal song or I'm going to do a folk song. Prince was like, what, what do I need to make this brilliant? Oh, I'm doing when doves cry at the last second i'm going to turn off the baseline and freak people out that's the kind of thing yeah. that was very common in those days and i think that you can go in tons of different directions whether it's jeff lynn and electric light orchestra and the beatles before that or you yeah. know yeah there's a lot of different ways you can go with it and you know for me the modern amalgam of perfection is gorillas if you want to talk about pop music and i guess my question for you that is a long way around to a very simple question but you being a person who's decidedly chose to try to make very good pop music i guess i want to put you on the spot uh, i know it's a little bit of a leading question but do you feel like pop music today is pulling its weight and i don't mean meaning wise in terms of like fighting the system or a, i'm just saying like in terms of construction in terms of the grand mythology that sits behind it if you look at the 40 years of what pop music was and what its goal was in terms of trying to make infectious hooks earworms or whatever you want to call it that people love to like you could take it all the way back to the five satins and in, in the still of the night like do you look at the current pop music landscape of 2018 and think that those people who are considered pop music whether they're super popular or not do you feel like they're pulling the genre's weight as far as the reputation that the genre has this is a great question it's a great question and i think my answer divides in a few ways this question I, there's a few reasons I love pop music, and it always, I, and to me, it always will pull its weight for these reasons. Uh, I was reading a big piece, and I've been really interested in this theory, but I was reading a big piece on the, the, what pop music does and why it is what it is, and how it ebbs and flows with the economy of a country, with the political state of a country, and it has a lot more to do with that than you think. Um, so I'll, I'll finish the second part of this, this theory as soon as I complete this, but um, in times of, what, what did I say? In times of uh, a country thriving, people want sad songs. And in times of depression, in hard political times, in hard financial times, people want happy songs. Mm. People want to be able to forget about it. And I always found that really fascinating because People want to feel, they want to be able to connect to things. They don't want to have to overthink connecting to things. They just want to be able to turn it on and for it to give them the feeling they want. And that's always been pop music's place. Um, so uh, when, we're, when we're going through a hard time, financially, we just want to go party. So like party songs actually uh, do really well during times of uh, economic hardship. But times of thriving, people are able to give themselves the luxury of being in touch with their emotions. People want to hear a sad song. People want to hear the slow song, the emotional song. And I, I, you know, like, I've been fascinated with the fact that that is why we need pop music. Um, most people in the world don't know where to go to get music. They don't know to look in the dark corners of the indie rock or the, the ambient music or the instrumental classical playlists on Spotify. These people just kind of want to hear something that's going to make that they can turn on and they're going to identify with right away. And that's ultimately the, the power of pop music. And I think where it's gotten its bad rep over the years is the fact that it's been uh, sort of turned into a, a factory of sorts. It's, it's its own uh, self-perpetuating money-making industry because they know, people know how to achieve this. So you bring in teams of professionals to make it happen, just like any other big business. Now you look at all the big songs on the radio. There's probably four or five, four or five major songwriters on that. There's probably three or four different producers, multi-million-dollar 
uh, mixers and masters working on that because that's the formula it takes to fill that, that hole in what humanity needs. And that's where it gets the bad rap. Like, is there anything really authentically true about that? If it's just a bunch of professionals coming in to write it. Well, these people are really good at something for a reason. But there's always the people on the side that actually create music, create their pop music. Um, and, you know, half of it's the, the, the factory and half of it's the real deal. Does that make the factory songs any less valuable? No, it's still doing its job. And it's still helping people get through their daily life in the economic state that, that they're in. And that is the goal of pop music. I think the goal is just to be identified to and to be listened to. And to be honest, I think pop music is in a better place now than it was five years ago. I turned on the radio five years ago, and it just wasn't really what I wanted to hear to 